so this one is a short tutorial about how to use AAA nodes. It is a very simple system. I wouldn't recommend Total Blender beginners to go this route maybe, although it is very simple. And the idea behind this is to help you out, you know, block out some ideas fast. After you have downloaded the zipped directory, you just unpack it and place it anywhere you want. So this is the directory and inside of it, it should be something like this, probably AAA nodes 002 without this uh, at the end. If we go inside Blender, we have to set the path, go to edit preferences and set the path here. The path will go all the way to the directory. And after you did that, you can start using three play node. Let's open another window and go to the asset browser. Here you will see I have uh, three play nodes. In case you don't see it, you have to go here and select either all or three play nodes. If you extend this list, you will see that it's uh, categorized. So let's open another window. We can close this one here and this one here. We need Geometry Nodes Editor. We don't need this sidebar for now. Press N. And now we can create a new Geometry Nodes modifier. You can also see it here. And start adding the nodes. So here uh, under the primitives uh, section where I usually uh, start, I would probably uh, drag either curve or this straight curve. So for example, let's use this. And if you connect it to the output, you will see just a simple curve. You can change the resolution and the position of the endpoints and the midpoint like so. This is already something. Uh, resolution is set to 16 by default, uh, which means that it has like uh, 16 points. And of course, you can change that any way you want. Now, what we need, since this is just a curve and you probably be aiming at the mesh or object, so we can drag this uh, profile curve and move this here. So now we have the curve and the profile curve. So we can also check this profile curve. It can be rectangle, circle, points, rectangle, and star. And you also have uh, some parameters here, which you can adjust. So now uh, we can go to the extruders here and uh, maybe select, uh, we can go with the curve master, which is this one. And we can plug the curve into the curve socket and uh, one of these to the profile curve socket. So this is what you get. and. From this point on, it's uh, more or less uh, adjusting the parameters. So for example, you can enable tilt, so you can tilt this. You can also trim the curve and many other things. You can also resemble profile. So it can be either triangle and anything above it. Other than that, you can also fill caps. So you see it's closed now, no holes here. Let's go back to primitives and let's drag this uh, straight curve and just so you can see that you can play, you know, with different inputs uh, to get different results. So in this example, you can, you know, extend uh, the curve. One other cool thing that might be useful for you, uh, for example, in scenario where you would do some sort of maybe columns or something like that, we have these uh, silhouettes. So if you enable silhouette and plug it here, this happens. Or you can use this one or this one. So it really depends what you want to achieve. Now again, uh, this is the current profile. And if we go back here and resample it, you can get a different profile depending on what you need. So let's move on. Now at this point, if this object is something that you were aiming at, what you can do, you can group these nodes, these node groups like this, tap to get it outside of a group. Uh, now you can continue with uh, combiners or distributors. So combiners, you would use them if you want to join different objects and maybe uh, do a mirror of an object. So for example, I can use this X combiner and then I have the mirrored 
version of this, which is useful because then I can uh, move it on any axis. I can rotate it as well, like so. You can also intersect to get this, uh, this middle section where they overlap. There is also a distributor section. So here you have typical array operations. For example, let's see what this does. So this might be cool for some sort of a temple or maybe soldiers or I don't know. Now let me just change the name of this group to something like Pillar. Actually, I just need to change the label name. And let's color it to something like uh, yellow or green. Delete these distributors. Now I'll choose another tool and this is a cutter. So as you can see, as an input, we also need a profile curve. So let's go back to the primitives and go for this profile curve, did like so, and connect this mesh output here to geometry. Sometimes you will get this uh, funky smooth shading. What you can do is search for shading, set shade smooth, like so, and then do this, which will disable it. The idea behind this tool was to use it to cut into something. So you don't have to use it like that, but that was the initial idea. You can adjust the depth of the cut with of the cut you can even add bevels so this is the width of the bevel and with this you can decide how many segments the bevel will have then you can also add fillets adjust the fillet radius and how smooth it is basically you're doing the same thing as you did with the bevels here if you don't uh, need this profile if you just want your cutter to be you know like a solid I mean, this already is solid, uh, but if you want to fill this whole uh, volume, you would go here and check this solid checkbox. Now we can also adjust taper. It really depends on what you want to do and how you want to use it. So we can, of course, play with profiles a bit more. Let's group this write something like cookie cutter and add color something maybe like this so we know what it is now uh, let's move forward let's uh, maybe add this uh, primitive uh, maybe a cube like so and then we can add transformer uh, this one let's see here Maybe change the scale a bit on the x-axis. And so this is a really simple object. And if we go back to the distributors, we can maybe again use this. You see? And then we can instance it like so. You see that uh, this is a rather random distribution. And this is not because of uh, the random value here so we have changed the scale but this is not related to this uh, scale random value which is also an interesting option to use uh, this is related to this translate random value so if we set this to zero we would get something like this and now if i go here bring this all the way to maybe even one uh, you have to if you want to use one you will have to type it in okay like so and I can use this as a cutter and to do that I will use this same cube node and this transform node as well so if I duplicate this one and plug this here Let's see what I get. Okay, I want to change something here. So I want to do this and this. I will first use uh, the combiner join like so, just so I can see uh, what is going on. 
let's scale it on a z axis like so like so and then i can uh, translate it on z axis like so and on y axis like so obviously already know that i want to uh, cut this in of course you don't have to use this complex uh, join node you can use the simple join join geometry and do this and this right this also works of course i just want to show you that there is a join tool available with a lot more uh, options so okay i know that this is now the way i want to cut in so for this i will use bullies and for this scenario any of this uh, these will work so let's take this one let's add first mesh here let's add second mesh here and let's do this and now you will see it is cut in from this point on i can for example i can maybe group all this paint it reddish purplish and maybe label it as cubes cut cube a uh, cube whatever ccc maybe we'll go with something like this radial and spiral and you have a bunch of options here so of course uh, the amount or the number of instances radius resolution you can trim it of course you can sync the orientation to always be oriented at a certain axis you can rotate uh, instances on various axes you can also scale instances of course the scale can also be randomized and of course you can change the seed value and so on a lot of options here now let's go back to the first one and that was this pillar let's plug it here so we can see it go inside by pressing tab and i want to go back to uh, this adjustments that we can do to the curve itself and and also to the overall shape so as you can see we have already played a bit with the silhouette like so but there are a few more things that uh, we can do if we go here to the shapers we'll grab a few more nodes so let's take the noise and also let's take this twister node at the moment uh, for twister node to work we have to disable this uh, tilt and then we can add twister here for now nothing happens but if we change the value here you see what we get and also so for the noise we can plug this xy noise to the noise socket and change the value so you get something like really uh, organic so now if we would with the shift a look for volume so we can get uh, volume to mesh but we first need mesh to volume and volume to mesh connect it here and here and then here let's see that you can achieve something very organic like a tree or a horn of course you can play with the values and the resolution so if we go all the way down to 16 we will get something like this or 28 we'll get something like this which i think it's a great uh, base for those who are into sculpting you can achieve a lot of variation uh, so for example imagine uh, doing trees barks even uh, rocks so yeah that's it for this video and i hope uh, i'll make a new one soon cheers